Hello and welcome back to Glory Hounds. So, it's been a while since uh, there was an update. Uh, months is the only time reference that I have. Um, so, last we saw, uh, Dawnhound and Duskhound went up against the Saltwater Syndicate, which was Ahab, Ishmael, and Polly. They were trying to steal the the money gown, the money talks gown from the gallery. I think it was called the Opera Duke. And they were all tricked by Camu, the chameleon who stole the gown and then just left everyone, you know, with nothing. Uh, when dust counting, uh, well, when these two on the left went and tried to re retrieve the the gown from the Saltwater Syndicate, they found out that, you know, oh, we don't actually have it because Camu actually stole it from us. Um, and then, yeah. And then uh, Dust Count here decided to like, hmm, I'm going to do some, you know, personal reconnaissance by talking to Ahab since I have his number. So, yeah. There we go. <laughs> That's basically what happened in the previous update. So yeah, or not, not the previous update, the previous issue. Anyway, so yeah. Also, if in case you can't tell, I'm still a little sick. So if my voice sounds a little weird, that's why. Anywho, so yeah, without further ado, let us begin issue three of Glory Hounds. Issue three of Models, Monsters and Morality. last night and we only had about 20 ticks o'clock to haul our booty and our booties out of there before we be caught tried and jailed we were fearing for our lives so what happened in the end well I still be here be I not har 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 though Polly never did find his britches not exactly the luckiest lad in the world he seems very eccentric. Are that the feathered fiend may be, but his heart be in the right place. For a criminal, you mean? For a criminal. That blasted Camu, on the other hand. How'd you guys even meet him? He didn't really seem like the pirate type. Scallywax swam into our lair one day with a plan to steal the Money Talks gown. How he found the place, I can't even begin to know. Almost throttled the lad before I saw the heist plans with me own eyes. We take the gown and split the earnings, Savvy. Twas unsinkable. But it didn't turn out that way in the end. Or either of us. Arr, he brought a spring upon our cable and no mistake. When ye get your hands on him, give him a good paddling for me. I'll happily lend you an oar to do the deed with. We need to figure out where he went first. When I asked him if he had taken anything that don't belong to him, he said that he specialized in fashion of all things, rare, exotic silks and leathers and the like. Not even always things that be worth a lot of coin. Strange, ain't it? Says the guy who dresses like a freaking pirate for work. Have you looked in the mirror lately, laddie? We may have some colorful uniforms, but at least most of ours ain't form-fitting. Which ain't all bad, of course. Got quite a good look at, at that booty of yours. Right back at ya. You must do some serious squats. This tail ain't just for swimming and sailing, that much be certain. I could show ya if you fancy. Hey now, business first. Fair play to ya. I do suppose that there be one more thing. While we were doing our syndicate orientation, Camu gabbed about some of his plans for after. Said he had some big things lined up for the coming days. And something about making them all pay. Speaking from experience, would you have any ideas as to what his next course of action could be? 
Experience? What do you take me for? A rotten thief? Well, you did kind of steal one of the most valuable pieces the gallery had to offer. Twas a jest, lad. Mm, word up to me. I would be doing some, er... What'd it be called again? Reconnaissance? Reconnaissance. Aye, that. Find out what his next target would be and get there before he does. And give him what he deserves. Thanks, Captain. Turns out that there's more to you than just good looks and a criminal record after all. Har har. You got quite the mouth on you, eh? Uh, I could put it on you instead, if you prefer that. Back at my place. I'll go pick up the tab, laddie. Wait for me. Drifting. I'm drifting on an endless blue expanse, far above the ground. My view bobs up and down, slowly, evenly. Thoughts come and go, never staying too long. I'm lost somewhere between dream and reality, my senses dulled save for a pleasant soreness. Exhausted but content, I stretch my aching limbs and yawn. At some point I open my eyes, but the blue expanse beneath me remains. Well, well, look who's waking up. Mm -hmm. I rub my eyes. A humongous whale just smiles at me. At least, I think he does. Can't quite tell from this angle. His head's really big. Good morning to you, lad. Had a good night's rest? With what little of it we spent sleeping? Yeah, I guess. Ah, yes. I suppose I did keep you up longer than I intended. It's okay. You make a pretty good bed. I snuggle into him. He flexes the peck that I'm using as a makeshift pillow so hard that it makes my head bounce. <laughs> hey, cut it out. I'm still a little sore. Just a little, eh? Might have gone too easy on you after all then, lad. You call that going easy, Captain? I got a full body workout. Meant to get you back for that stunt you pulled with that fancy grappling hook of yours. But if you're still gabbing up a storm... Why, well, I'll have to bring me own weapons of choice next we meet. See what really makes you squeak like a ship's wheel. I do like the sound of that. Didn't hear you, lad. What did you say? I mean, I like the sound of that, Captain. Har. That's more like it. Knew you would, laddie. Knew you would. What kind of weapons are we talking about? Uh, a couple of ropes. Maybe a little something to shut that mouth of yours. Hell yes. Really? You should see the look on your face right now. Priceless. I should stay on my toes the next time that we fight if this man's got me figured out this well already. Jerk. He laughs. You know, I got a few things of my own that we can. Just then the door slams open. I jolt up from the large whale man's chest, snatching the closest thing that I can find. A small towel to cover our naked bodies with. Hey, Rumi. Oh, uh, hey, Rumi's friend. Max, you gotta start knocking. Jesus. Whoa, my bad. I'll come back later. He closes the door, but I hear his voice on the other side. Uh, breakfast on the table, dude, and I got something for you. Kind of in the middle of something here. Are we now? He squeezes my butt, and I barely manage to contain a yell. Oh, it's just, my mom's got these tickets for this thing tonight. I thought maybe you and Lou might like to go. Noted. Oh, also some guy named Milo called, was asking where you were. I tense up. What did you tell him? Oh, just told him that you were hanging out with a friend and that you'll be over right away. He said that he'd get you over there when you're ready. I hear him walk away. The sigh of relief that comes out of me is audible. 
glad that I'm not getting fired for being late twice in a single week. What time is it even? Hmm, about nine, lad. I suppose that it's about time that I put on my bridges and bid our goodbyes for now. But first... He grabs me and turns me around with a single hand. Before I can protest, I feel his lips against mine, though it takes some precision aiming considering how big he is. Outside of combat, I don't think that I mind the sheer size of him one bit. Or the size of his tongue, for that matter. I'm more than a little woozy by the time he pulls back. One for the road. I lean in again. Can we make that two? Reckon we got time for another round? I'll make time. Atta boy. I watch him get dressed. I'd shower with him, but our shower's barely big enough for me as it is. I don't think that I'd be able to handle Ahab. I don't think that any apartment in the city can handle him. Kinda makes me wonder just how big the furniture and the doors at his place must be. The thought of a car wash size bathtub amuses me. Well, I estimate this be it spotty. He regrettably zips up his pants. Next time we meet out there, we shall be enemies once more. At least I know your soft spots now. And I yours. He gets my chest a poke that could easily bowl me over if he applied even the tiniest bit more force. I intend to give you no quarter all the same. Not even after last night, huh? After last night, you should be aware that I ain't the type to just lie back and take it, laddie. Suits me, just... Try to stay out of trouble until then, okay? Keep the thievery to a minimum if you can. If you can promise me you'll go after Camu, I'd be a done deal. He leans down to give me one more peck on the lips before he turns around and walks out of my bedroom. Be seeing you, me hearty. I hear the front door close a moment later. Can I, uh, can I come in, dude? Yeah. Max has seen me in my undies more times than I can count. Not too big a deal when there's not a big naked whale in the, my room. Whoa, this place is a mess. What did you guys do? Mm, just played some games. The triple A kind or the triple X kind? That's, that's none of your... I'm surprised you got anything done with all the earthquakes last night. I don't remember any earthquakes. Really, dude? The whole building was shaking and I kept hearing this awful screaming. Really harsh my vibe, know what I mean? And it lasted for most of the night. I, uh... I'm sure no one got hurt. I hope so, dude. Anyway, he wiggles a pair of tickets in my face. What are these for? There's this big fashion thing tonight. Everyone's going. And your mom isn't? Nah, she's shooting this perfume ad. I thought that she was shooting an ad yesterday. That one was for skinny jeans. Those are back in fashion? When you're a butterfly, every pair of jeans is a skinny jeans. Keep up. Ahem. <clears throat> you want these? I'd love to go, but I kind of have this work thing today. And I promised that I'd be at the Hain for the anniversary. No big deal, dog dude. I'll see how much they sell for online. Can probably make some bank. Things all the same. I'll, uh, be ready in a few. Gotta freshen up. Put on some clothes. All right. By the way, the guy who just left. I swear I saw him on the news somewhere. Really now? <laughs> Funny that. Anyway, uh, yeah. See you in a bit. I shut the door, collapse face first into the bed once more. The last day or so is still a blur to me, but after all is said and done, I think that it could have gone a lot worse. Never thought that it'd end up with me sleeping with a wanted criminal, but hey. At least I learned a thing or two about our new target for Mayhab. I'm sure Milo and Rawl 
can use that somehow. I close my eyes and sigh into my pillow. Before my bed lowers underneath me. Is it collapsing? Was Ahab that heavy? I rub the sleep out of my eyes. No, it's definitely not collapsing. It's freaking sinking. Into... Into the floor. I hold onto my sheets for dear life, but my bed turns until it's almost vertical, and both me and the sheets fall down onto another angled surface. Another one of those slides. Why in my bedroom? It only takes a moment to hurtle down at top speed before I meet my old friend, the mat in the computer room. Oof. And my pelvis already wasn't doing so good after last night. Can you please start warning me before you do that? My phone thuds on the mat next to me. At least I don't have to go home to pick that up anymore. Rao and Milo, for once, are silent. Rao's got his hand clasped over his mouth. Milo's just standing there, though I can hear his beak grinding from all the way over here. What's wrong? Rao tugs at his collar. His face is about as red as his tie. Well... Ahem. I look down. Oh, right. I grab the sheets and pull them up over me, avoiding any potential sticky places Ahab left. It's your fault. I wasn't expecting my bed to turn into a theme park ride. You were late. We were wondering where you were. Clearly not getting ready for work. You are lucky that this is not a 9 to 5 job. For your information, I was investigating the gown all night. I see. Must have been difficult tasks to perform in undergarments. Would investigator fancy shower and a change of clothes? That would be appreciated, yeah. I feel much better after finally getting a chance to freshen up and brush my teeth. So this is what rich people body wash smells like. Gotta say, I'm a fan. I'll just bike over here from now on, if you don't mind. Apology spot, the time is of the essence. We must crack case, after all. Any new discoveries? I was up all night looking into the security footage, but I couldn't find the little devil anywhere. It's as though he went off the grid the moment that he left the bar after the fight. I checked business card for fingerprints and looked into Target in government records, but it proved unsuccessful. Did you manage to discover anything in your, um, what did you call it? Personal investigation? Just a little bit. I don't know if it'll help. Don't ask where I got the information from. Don't ask where I got the information from. Where did you get information from? I might be able to get away with white lies when it comes to most of my friends, but this bird can smell bullshit from a mile away. His scrutinizing glare offers no escape. Um... Um... Remember when Raoul said that he wished that he could ask Ahab some questions? Milo's eyes narrow so hard that one could almost mistake them for being closed entirely. Well, while I was undercover, back when this all started, he gave me his phone number. You didn't? Yeah, I called it and told him to meet me. I know what happened. Fuck. You do? Yes. You are not being entirely forthcoming with truth, Duskhound. I am not? You seem tired. You have developed strange way of walking. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. You forcefully interrogated Ahab alone and forced him to tell you Kamu's whereabouts. What were your methods? Uh... I will have you know torture is illegal in Batavia. I did make him scream pretty loud, but I don't know if that counts. Out with it! What did you learn? Well, the long and short of it is that he specializes in stealing fashion and materials. Silks, leathers, and the like. The rarer the better. Doesn't always go for stuff based on market value. He was also the one to approach Ahab, 
not the other way around. How do you know that we can trust Saltwater Syndicate leader on this? He seemed pretty pissed at him, to be honest. He kept talking about him breaking some code of honor. Ahab does fancy that code of his. Seeing as this is our only current lead at the moment, I say that it at least bears a little investigating, wouldn't you say? That is true. It could help determine Nick's course of action. I had a similar idea, so I texted Lou. I should hope that you have learned lesson about involving civilians by now, Dusk Hound. Listen, they already know who we are at this point, and to be honest, if anyone knows what this guy's next target could be, or hell, even what happened to the gown, it's them. It's our best option. We were going to talk to them anyway. My phone buzzes. Oh, perfect timing. Rao and Milo shoot me a simultaneous look of expectation. Lou says that they've managed to take us some dirt. So now's as good a time as any to head over to the Hain. We can talk about our findings there. The Hain? The place that I told you about last night, before I left? It's a bar. More than a bar, really. It's a second home. They actually have a big event going on today. If they've been open for 25 years. Oh. He fidgets. Uh, something wrong? No, it's... I mean... Do you wish to stay at base, Master Brevard? Well... I do need to swing by the flower shop for... Later. Um, but I suppose I could go. If it's for the good of the mission. Oh, right. Technically, Ralph Brevard's never been seen in public. Guess there might be some secret identity shenanigans going on. You can tell me what's wrong. I won't judge. I just... Don't deal well with crowds is all. It's something that I've had since I was little. It's all a bit overwhelming for me. Is that why you stay out of the public eye? It certainly plays a part. I like creating, inventing, building a bright future for the citizens of Shippersburg. I'm not one for meetings and long discussions about nothing in particular with lots of different folks. So I leave it to the spokespeople. I handle considerable amount of Master Brevard's corporate communications. Is there anything this bird can't do? You know, back when I worked for the company, some people thought that you didn't exist at all. That's how I prefer things in a way. What about the Dawnhound? You seem to deal just fine with crowds when you're working. The Dawnhound is different. He's smart, strong, outgoing, brave. When I put on the mask, that's how I feel too. I think that I felt something similar when I first saw myself in costume yesterday. And when we thought that we got the dress back from Ahab and his goons, that was a hell of a rush. You helped give me a bit of courage, that's for sure. I'd be happy to return the favor. I extend a hand to my boss. I don't know, Spot. Come on, it's for the good of the mission. Besides, you did promise Lou that you'd bring them up to speed on my situation. This is true, and I do not break promises. Well, we must. The Hain is bustling with activity by the time that we roll up. I guess Lou must have helped William get some buzz on social media. I haven't met most of these folks before. Then again, most of the regulars aren't used to showing up this early. Raoul slows down as he takes in his surroundings. He's sweating bullets, and it isn't even hot. This is a mighty big crowd. I hope that it does not put too much strain on you, Master Brevard. Oh no, my law. It's fine. He doesn't look fine. Are you sure you're okay? Rao nods, avoiding eye contact. Uh, just out of my element. I don't leave the house without my costume on all that often. He looks at the ground. Hey, it's alright. These are all good people. I have to say, I did not expect a bar like this to be your favorite place. Hmm. You mean you didn't expect me to be gay? Alex, we have lived long lives so far. We have traveled world. 
who you love is of no concern to us. Only fighting ability and mind. Thanks, that's actually kind of sweet. I only meant I expect you to be homebody. You being gay was quite obvious. Add Gadar to Milo's long list of talents. Do you often visit? You could say that. Almost every week since college. Or, well, my shoddy attempt at college. You're gonna love the drinks here. Just gotta find William. The rooster's easy to find. What with the fancy dress and the huge fake lashes he's wearing. I guess that corset ended up fitting after all. He notices me and heads in my direction. I can hear his stiletto heels even above the din of the crowd and the generic gay house music. Well, if it ain't Al, awfully nice to see your face around these parts. Ain't you just the sweetest little apple in the apple pie? He pinches my cheeks. You're walking mighty funny, love. Something the matter? I I'm not. He clicks his tongue. Couldn't have anything to do with the big boy you brought over for drinks last night? I whisper. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm expecting him to press further, as he usually does, but he's already moved on to Raoul and Milo. Raoul is twiddling his thumbs, while Milo's as stone-faced as ever. You brought company! Some strapping boys, too! These are my friends, Milo and Ra uh, Raymond. My name's Ra It is good to make your acquaintance. Guys, this is William. He owns... I do beg your pardon, good sir. My name's Mother Hen, owner of this little watering hole, pride of Shippersburg, I always say. Sorry, uh, Mother Hen. Gotta say, he's nailing his accent. Those acting classes for seniors he took a couple of years back must be paying off. Aw, oh, don't worry, Al. You can call me Charlene. He giggles behind a big fan that I didn't even know he had. Have you seen Lou anywhere? Sure have. They came in a little while ago. Ain't been waiting long. He points to the bar, Lou's sitting in the corner away from the main crowd. A holographic screen in front of them shows a bunch of kittens, who all pretty much look identical to them, babbling away. Guess they're with their other parent for the weekend. Thanks. How's the party coming along? Oh, swell. Just swell. Ain't had this many customers since we had that summer of sin leather party last year. Oh boy, do I remember that one. That's where I met Lars. Ah, uh, Lars. I'll never forget those six beefy arms. Why? I have trouble keeping up just by myself. Speaking of, you boys want anything to drink? He looks at Raoul and Milo. Seeing as your first timers, drinks are on the house. First t timers? Just meaning I ain't seen you all in here before, and I do like taking care of my guests, good sir. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Raoul's gaze flicks between the drink menu and the bar in general, as if he's not really sure where to look or what to focus on. I don't blame him. Some of the patrons are dressed rather flamboyantly, to put it mildly. Milo, on the other hand, is taking to the hain like a fish to water. He shoots William, er, uh, Charlene, the smile of someone who's been in this kind of place before. Just what has this guy been hiding? I thank you for generosity, madam. I will have fruity drink with little pink umbrella. It must be pink. I will accept no substitute. A mighty fine choice. How about a kitty red raccoon? William winks at Milo. The crow doesn't skip a beat and simply crosses his legs. That is perfect. Brings back memories from old days. Old days? Raul is next. What about you, sir? I can recommend the cocktails. A refined drink for a refined man. Uh, a cocktail sounds great. I'll have, um... What are your options? William points to a blackboard with a cocktail named on it. I brace myself as I watch Raoul read the names, mumbling under his breath, eyes getting wider every second. Screaming orgasm? Uh, sex on the beach? What's a cum shot? No one answers. I'll... 
do, do you have soda? I'll have soda. A soda and a kinky red raccoon. I'll hop right to it, chickadee. He winks at Rao, who smiles back, making himself a little smaller. This is definitely not the dawn hound that I know. You sure about this? I will be once I have a place to sit down for a bit. Sorry. Uh, just a little. He trails off. Overstimulated? Yes. Hey, don't sweat it. If you want to take a breather outside in a bit, I'll be happy to come along. Ralph finally settles, and I see Milo smiling. Okay, I'd like that. Now let's find you a place to sit down. I gesture for them to follow me as I take a seat next to Lou. Oh, hey, look guys, it's Uncle Alex. Uncle Alex is here. The kittens on the screen scream in unison. At least I still have fans out there. Hey guys, what's, uh, what's haps with the snaps? Uncle Alex, no one says that anymore. Yeah, Uncle Alex, no one. Sorry guys, Uncle Alex is a little behind the times. I guess I'm not that cold after all. I still say it. But you're old. Wow, low blow. I gently tap Lou on the shoulder and point to Raoul and Milo. They nod. All right, fellas. Herper has to leave for a little while now, okay? You all be good now. Aww. Bye, Perper. Bye, Uncle Alex. Bye. The kittens wave at me before Lou and Sakal. They're growing really fast. Like weeds. I reckon they'll be taller than I am by the time that they hit puberty. Can't imagine seven kids all entering puberty at the same time. That's what you get with litters. I've known Lou since we were teenagers. I don't think that the world is ready for seven copies of them at that age. Anyway, hi. Long time no see. Nice to see you too, Mr. Milo. Mr. Donhound. Raoul perks up as soon as he hears his codename. Enough to look Lou in the eye, at least. Good to see you too as well. My apologies for the trouble at the gallery yesterday. It must have given you quite the fright. Hey, I wasn't the only one getting hurled through the air. I'm fine. Speaking of, can you finally tell me what's going on with Alex? Um, uh, Milo, I think it's best if you explain. Milo gives the bar a quick look around, no doubt making sure that no one else is within earshot. He pushes his glasses up and turns back to us. It is long story, but short version is, does count, Alex, works for us. He looks at Raoul. More precisely, for Donhelm. The Rottweiler seems to come alive a bit, his focus shifting to our group, as opposed to looking for the nearest window to make his escape from. Our mission is to keep City of Shippersburg safe. Safe from criminals too difficult for police to deal with. Criminals that require different approach to take down. Lou raises a non-existent eyebrow. You mean less legal ones? There are times when one must uh, circumvent law to do what is right. And wear spandex, apparently. It's not spandex! All of us look in Rao's direction. He is the loudest he's been since we walked in here. The scoundrels threatening our fair city need to know that there are heroes who will not stand idly by while they engage in their villainy. He balls up a fist, pumping it up in the air like an old theater actor. That there are people who will fight for justice when the police can't or won't. The look on Lou's face tells me that they're not entirely convinced. You mean you want criminals to know that they'll have to deal with, um... They lean on their hand. The Dawn Hound? Precisely so. We're still working on the branding. And how is it that Alex of all people got roped into this? I've known him forever and he hardly seemed like the hero material. Hey! Milo seems to take pleasure in Lou's remark, judging by her smirk. Mr. De Rouge is a rookie, yes, but he is not without certain qualities. 
He looks good in rubber. It's not rubber either. Ahem. <clears throat> Alex demonstrated his cunning and tenacity in a most dire situation. His tail starts wagging, almost swatting a smaller mouse walking past his bar stool in his face. He confronted an armed criminal to protect an innocent bystander without hesitation and saved her life in the process. I wouldn't say entirely without hesitation, but I'll take the compliment. He may be inexperienced, but he has what it takes to be a hero, that I promise. I don't know if he's speaking the truth, or if it's sunk cost fallacy talking at this point. Lou ponders his statement for a moment, punctuating their thoughts by slurping their tea loudly. Are we talking about the same Alex? The one who broke down crying on a roller coaster for five year olds because, and I quote, the drop was too steep. It was steep. It was a meter tall. I swear it was taller. But I suppose you did save Miss De Bruyne's bacon last night. And you're obviously sure that you like this career switch. I know it's kind of out there, Lou, but it feels right. They sigh. All right. I'll buy it for now. At a discount, but I'll buy it. But do you really think that the scum of the earth is going to quiver in fear seeing you dressed up in... They look in Ryle's direction. Highly advanced materials. Can't tell you the details, I'm afraid. Industry secret and all. Right. I'm not going to pretend that I like it completely, but if you're sure that this is the right job for you, then who am I to judge? Besides, you seem to be in good hands. Luke glances at Milo. Claws? Paws? Hands is good. Just making sure. I will keep Dawnhelm and Duskhelm safe. I mean, if something happened to Ral, we'd both be out of a job. Make no mistake, all of Shippersburg, the populace, and criminals alike will know our names. Oh. Lou rubs their paws together not entirely unlike a cartoon villain concocting a dastardly scheme. If you want to get the word out there, you've got to work on your media presence. You need people to see you. What are you getting at? They crack their knuckles, audible even over the loudness of the crowd and the generic gay house music that is still playing. Time to put my bachelor's in marketing to work. Since when do you have a bachelor's in marketing? Had it for a couple of years now, been working on it during my off time at the reception desk. Just don't tell Brevard that I said that. My eyes are drawn to Ryle's in spite of my best effort, but he doesn't seem to take umbrage. You need a person who knows what's going on in Shippersburg. I can help. That would be... He taps his chin. Very helpful, actually. Do you guys have a name yet? A name? Who's the comic geek here? Hero teams have names, right? What's yours? Dawnhound and Duskhound. Too plain. The Dawn Squad? Not punchy enough. Crew for crushing of criminals? What is this, a metal band? Let's forget the names for a sec. Did you get my text last night? You mean the drunk selfie that you sent me at 12? I, I did? You looked very flattering. The one before that then. The one that, that took me 10 minutes to decipher something about wanting inflammation on camos wears a butt? That's not what I meant. I know, I figured it probably had something to do with the gown after you mentioned that you couldn't get it back. So I messaged Fena and asked her about it. You got Fena's phone number? Lou clicks her tongue and finger guns at me. I still got game. Anyway, Camu. Fena looked into it, but the trail went cold on her end. The name didn't show up on any database, and the temp agency website went offline after the robbery. Camu is pseudonym, most likely. Yeah, I was curious too, so I read up on him while I waited for you guys to show up. So did we, but we were unable to make any headway. Well, you've got a super sleuth on the case now. They pull up their screen again. 
I couldn't find much when I looked up the name alone. I had similar issue. But when I added some keywords based on the stuff Alex texted me, I found some old blog posts. Very old blog posts. Most of them didn't have that many views. The algorithm definitely didn't favor this guy. Anything we can use? It was mostly pictures of things that he'd made. A lot of very expensive materials on display. Materials that you don't just buy at your local fabric store. And just a ton of complaining about how underappreciated he felt. That wasn't the only thing, though. You guys remember when Shippersburg Museum had the crown jewels on display last year? The ones that got stolen, right? It was all over the news. Every guard got knocked out cold. What's more, no one showed up in the security footage. The Saltwater Syndicate took the blame for it at the time based on circumstantial evidence. Some members got arrested, but the jewels were never recovered. So imagine my surprise when I saw this on Camus' blog. They turned a screen towards us. It shows a mannequin wearing a strangely chunky necklace with a distinctive gem as a centerpiece. That is quite... Uh... Well, I, I wouldn't say pretty. The gems from one of the royal scepters. I'm sure of it. If he did that to a timeless piece of jewelry, I shudder to think what he's planning for the money talks gown. Then our course of action is clear. I agree. It is? First, we have to take stock of all the outfits Camel has made. Affirmative. Then we analyze materials used in outfits. And cross-reference them with all reported thefts of rare fabrics, garments, and jewelry in the past few years. Afterwards, we look into commonalities and deviations of thefts. By doing so, we can deduce which crimes have been committed by a perpetrator. We follow that up through an investigation of how fashion trends have evolved over time. Finally, we use process of elimination to determine most likely target for next heist. Before you go and do all that, mind showing me the car that you guys found? Fena mentioned it. I have it with me. I doubt that it'll be of much use. Milo looked into it and there was nothing that we could find. Milo produces it from his breast pocket. As he hands it over to Lou, I catch a scent on that. Because of all the smoke from the capsule, I hadn't noticed before. There is a flower. Hibiscus and lemon? Hold on. I snatch it out of Milo's hands before Luke can grab it. Hey, what's the big idea? Sorry, I just... I bring it up to my nose. Did one of you spray perfume on this? I don't smell anything. Neither do I. It's faint. But I'm catching a whiff of something. Flowers and lemon. Lemon, you say? He leans over and takes one of the candles sitting on the bar. Don't go burning the place down. I do not intend to. Hold card over flame. Of course. Invisible ink. I do as I am instructed, and as a card heats up, an image is slowly seared into it. Below it is a text that says, Come find me. That's... A logo of some kind. Lou, do you know? I think I've seen that somewhere before. Might have to do with the new convention center. Their face goes blank. Of course. Bonds through bondage. Uh, what? There's a big fashion show being held at the new convention center tonight. That's where he's gonna be. How can you be so certain? I have to agree, it is easy to jump to conclusions, but to dive into the heart of a criminal mind isn't easy. He's a self-proclaimed fashion king who wants to build a name for himself. Some of the world's most famous fashion designers will be showing off their creations made with rare and expensive materials. So, it's a once-in-a-decade event. Highly exclusive. We might have trouble getting in then. Getting in would be the least of our worries. I can only assume that this card was a direct challenge to whoever discovered it. That might mean trouble. How so? Think about it. We recovered the capsule from the Syndicate, but Camel had no way of knowing that we'd be the ones to take it. Meaning that he was confident enough that he dared to challenge Ahab and his crew directly. He must be a dangerous adversary. It is possible that he is not operating alone. 
It's a risk that we need to take. I agree. You made a promise. I refuse to let this wretched chameleon give us the slip. I'd be letting a lot of people down if I backed out now. Our attention shifts as we notice William heading our way. All right. Sorry it took so long, but I got y'all your drinks. A fruity drink for the handsome birdie. I am grateful. And a soda for the big boy. A uh, big boy? I, uh, thank you kindly. I watch as Milo twirls a little drink umbrella around between his index finger and thumb, smiling to himself. He takes a sip and closes his eyes, smacking lips he does not possess. This is exquisite. Why, thank you, sir. Don't you want to take a break? What? I mean, Charlene. Bloody hell, I do. This corset's squeezing my organs like a lemon. Do you require assistance? I am mixologist myself. Willem collects himself, and his voice immediately goes back several octaves. Oh no, sugar. That won't be necessary. I got an extra helper today. Thank the Lord up above. He should be here any minute now. Oh? Oh? The door opens and the whole world stops as we all turn to see who's standing in the doorway. It's a mandrill, about as tall as I am. His frame casts an ominous shadow into the interior. I see you're all enjoying yourselves. His gruff voice and commanding presence are inescapable. His eyes run over the crowd. Ain't you? The fur on the back of my neck bristles as he takes a few slow, menacing steps into the bar. You could cut the tension in the air with a knife. He takes a deep breath, baring his huge canines. A lot of people here today. Several of the patrons scatter to get out of his way. One of them lets out a startled yelp as he brushes past them. The rest hold their breath, trying desperately to go unnoticed. His eyes meet mine. I swallow. Shit, I wasn't counting on this. Well, if it ain't you, nice running into you here. He walks up to me in a long stride. I can feel Raul tensing up again. Who is this guy? I could ask you the same thing. He stops in front of me, eyes flick between me and Raul and Milo. It's darn nice to see my sons making some new buddies. Sorry if I frighten you. I tend to have that effect on folks for some reason or another. He laughs as hard as he always does. A lifetime of this and he still doesn't know how to make a good first impression. Names, Barand, Barand de Roge. De Roge? Raul looks at me, then at the mandrel in front of us who laughs. What? Family resemblance didn't get it away. He swings one of his arms around me and gives me a nuggie. Hey, hey, stop. I'm not a kid anymore. I push him away. But you'll always be my boy. Raul looks on, confused, as Lou waves dad over. Baran. Lou. He hugs him as the rest of the bar resumes partying, the threat having subsided. How are you doing, kiddo? Pretty good, all things considered. How's the kids? They've been behaving. Won't stop talking about you since you showed them the fire truck. Ha! I was right happy to. Tell them that they can bring their friends next time. I'll even tell the boys to let them sound the old siren. He proceeds to make siren noises. He always has to include the siren noises. What are you doing here, Dad? Heard that there was a party and that you was gonna be here, so I came a running. Why, ain't a man allowed to come and support his son? Even brought my rainbow pin. Look. Oh, uh. You are. Just wasn't really expecting it. This isn't exactly your scene. Ha! You look like a deer caught in headlights, son. 
I'll be helping old Willie out a bit today. Just have fun with your friends and pretend that I ain't here. That's gonna be damn near impossible. I'm pleased as punch to have you, sir. Charlene, you're even prettier than the last time that I laid eyes on you. Ah, oh, you old hound. William giggles. At least, I think it's supposed to be a giggle. It's more like a shriek or a shrill. It's a miracle our glasses aren't shattering. Ever since I came out as gay and William offered to talk to my dad to help explain what I was going through, they've been two peas in a pod. It's funny thinking back on it now. I was scared and confused, worried about what he'd say, how he'd feel. But when William and him finished talking, he just hugged me the tightest that he'd done since he and mom adopted me. As weird as he gets sometimes, I've always looked up to him. He ran the Shippersburg Fire Brigade on his own for a couple of decades, as he often likes to say. He ain't bragging in the least either. He was the kind of guy who would go in and carry people out of burning buildings, the kind of guy who knew everyone, the kind of guy who'd stick his neck out for a complete stranger, even if he got nothing in return. The kind of guy I wasn't. Who are your friends, Alex? Dad's face is close to mine. Not every day that I see you hanging out with boys in spiffy clothes. Uh, they ain't loan sharks, are they? Or is this one of them, uh, sugar daddy situations? Dad, I don't often see you dating two at once. That's tough. Though, there was that one time. Dad, no. Ugh, I knew this was gonna happen. These are friends from work. My boss is at this new place that I'm working at, actually. Well, I, uh, I assume. Yes, you assumed. Ahem. Nice to meet you folks. Any friend of my boys is a friend of mine. He extends a hand in between them. Milo's the first one to shake it. Milo draws still. The two of them are locked in handshake for a few months. They both narrow their eyes, and there's a glint in Milo's that I've seen before during training. It looks like they're both straining a bit. Are they having a contest? Finally, they let go, a big grin spreading across Dad's face. Oof, that's some grip you've got. You must have lifted some serious weights in your day. If only he knew. I take pride in body. It is obvious that you do as well. Ha, I've been better, but I don't plan on losing to any pipsqueaks in here. Firefighter's honor. Next up is Rao, who's still trembling a little from my dad's entrance. I don't blame him in the least. I'm Ra Raymond. Dad shakes Rao's hand as well, far more gently. I'm thankful that he read the air. Nice to meet you, Ra Raymond. It good if I call you Ray? I think I'll call you Ray. Mmm. Good, good. I like your sense of style, Ray. Dad, no. Make a lot of money? Dad. I bury my face in my paws. Calm down, Alex. Just having a friendly little chat. I know this isn't just a friendly little chat. Many of my past boyfriends would agree. I'm glad you hired my boy after what happened at Brevard. He's a hard worker. I'm sure anyone here will tell you that. Always stands right back up after he takes a tumble. Oh, I agree. He's been a big help to us. Right, Milo? Milo's return to twirling his little umbrella. A second passes before he notices that he's being asked a question and he tucks it into his breast pocket. He is making progress, yes. Apple did not land too far from three, it seems. Maybe it's a drink talking, but I can't tell whether it's a compliment or a jab. Probably a bit of both. Good to hear, good to hear. Brian, can you put on an apron and fix these little lovely ladies some delicious drinks? I'll be right there. He grins at us. Duty calls. It was nice meeting you, Mr. DeRoad. Shucks, pleasure is all mine. Oh, and Alex? Hmm? Be sure to call your mom from time to time, okay? She keeps asking about you and it. I ain't your secretary. I sigh. Will do, Dad. Any reason you 
don't want to talk to her. I keep meaning to. But... I just forget, okay? I'm sure that she'd love to hear from you. What do I even tell her? How you been doing, for starters? Or about your new job? She'd freak. Think about it, kiddo. Now, if you don't mind, your old man's gonna earn his keep. Say hi to Max for me. And he's off. I take a deep breath. He seems like a nice man. A little intense, maybe. Intensely embarrassing. But you know he means well, Al. He's just a bit much sometimes. If I may ask, who's this Max that he asked you to say hi to? Oh, just my roommate. His mom's a former model and... Uh, hold on. I realized something. Of course, Max. I know how we're gonna get into that fashion show. Do you now? Yeah? Then we've no time to lose. Let's be off. But fruity drink is still half full. There will be plenty of time for fruity drinks once we catch that chameleon, my feathered friend. I say we join Spot onwards. Welcome to my humble abode. Just take off your shoes, okay? I vacuumed the other day. I didn't think that I'd ever have Ryle and Milo over, but there's a first time for everything. I decide to lead them to my room first. So this is where you live. Interesting. Sorry, it's no mansion. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. He fidgets, looking at the shelves. It's not all that impressive, but I do have a lot of my comics and games on display. I didn't take you for a collector, Alex. Nothing special, just picked up a few things here and there. And the wildest thing that I have is one of those model kits. Look. I point to the little dinosaur on the shelf. God, that one took me so many all-nighters to put together. I think it went through three bottles of glue. I had sticky fingers for a week. I always wanted to try one of those. The man who built a soup robot has never put a model together before. Surprisingly, no. I invent things for a living, but rarely for personal pleasure. You'd have to show me sometime. I would hate to disrupt team bonding, but what is purpose of visit? You mentioned gaining M32 fashion show? My roommate's mom used to be a fashion model, so his family gets invitations to these huge events all the time. I'm pretty sure Max's mom and her long list of connections are the only things keeping our landlord from kicking him out. We can enter the show without causing a scene. Excellent idea. What makes you think that he will be cooperative? He was going to give them to me this morning, but I didn't think that they'd be useful for anything yet. You guys wait here. I'll be right back. I head into the living room. Surprisingly, Max is sitting at the computer today, though I still hear anime coming from the speakers. He swivels the chair around when he sees me approach. Dude, you're home early. Just for a bit, I had something that I wanted to ask you. You could have just texted me, you know. Not with how flaky this guy can be. I was just wondering if I could still have those tickets to the fashion show. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. Knew that you'd come around. I think it'd be good for you, you know, dude. You don't really have the best fashion sense. What's wrong with my clothes? You rock that hoodie and sweatpants combo every day. I have other clothes. Other hoodies and other sweatpants. Shit, he's kind of right. Anyway, the tickets are on the table. They're all yours. Thanks a lot, man. I'll get you some nectar when I can. That'd be awesome. Oh, I, I know that you weren't hungry this morning, but I thought that you might like some apple pie later. So I put some in the fridge. You didn't use tomatoes this time, right? Oh, no, 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 tomatoes this time. I used a recipe off the internet. Max, following a recipe? I'm impressed. It's grandma's ramen apple pie. And that's my cue to leave. I think I'm good, thanks. Gotta go. Suit yourself, more for me. But you can't even... 
You know what? Never mind. I head back to my room, tickets in hand. I just hope Milo and Ral haven't seen anything unfortunate yet. I haven't exactly had time to clean. Thankfully, they don't seem too interested in prying. Though Milo seems to be looking rather intently at my retro station. You a gamer, Milo? Not in recent decades. But they remember this one from youth. Ah, that takes me back. I used to love it when I was in high school. Maybe we can play some time? Once we're not on a mission? Speaking of, I got the tickets. Excellent. The only thing left to do is to return to base and prepare. We are likely to see combat. A doubtful camu will give up dress easily. Won't we stand out in the crowd in our uniforms? Not entirely true. He brings up a holographic screen. Know this theme of fashion show? The tighter the better. Restraints, cuffs, leather, and harnesses form the basis of a legendary After Dark fashion show inspired by the wondrous world of bondage. That describes our gear pretty accurately, even if it was made that way unintentionally. Good. That means we'll have all our equipment at our disposal, should any trouble arise. Did he even hear the word bondage? I will join you for this mission. Would be useful to have eyes on ground. How are you going to blend in? I don't think the butler suit's going to cut it. And we only have two tickets. You underestimate me, Dust Count. I will find suitable costume and gain entry for occasion. Do not worry. This I gotta see. We heading back to the car then? There's a faster way to return to the base from here. I'm sure you know. Please don't tell me that you mean that slide. That's exactly what I mean. It's fast, efficient, fun. It's efficient at making me lose my lunch. I will make separate arrangements on my end. I will see you at the venue. He's barely out of the room and Ryle's already taken a tiny remote control out of his pocket and aimed it at my bed. Zero impulse control. He watches the bed sink into the floor like a kid on Christmas morning. So that's what it looks like. You're going in first. Don't mind if I do. He takes a running jump down the hole. I hear him whop and holler all the way down before I decide to join him myself. I knew that it'd be busy here, but this place is crawling with so many people that it might be a safety hazard. Dad would call the inspector and lecture the owners for hours if he were here. Ugh. Finding that lizard's gonna be like looking for a needle in a haystack at this rate. At least we sort of fit in. We're not the only ones in crazy clothes, that much is certain. Collars, masks, harnesses, corsets, it's basically anything goes in here. I'd almost say that we look plain in comparison. A large dapper butterfly with majestic wings approaches us a couple of feet past the entrance. He's got a pair of arms tied up in front of him. On brand for this kind of thing. Good thing that he's got two free ones to carry a tray with drinks with. Drinks, sir? Oh, um, no thanks. Maybe later. As you wish, sir. Enjoy the show. He spins on his heel and goes back to catering to the other guests. Man, even the staff is dressed for the occasion. We need to figure out where to start looking. This crowd's a little much, even for me. And the less said about their choices of music, the better. I'd take generic gay house music over this any day. Let's try to get somewhere quiet. We push our way through the crowd for what feels like an eternity. The more efficient that we try to be, the more the universe seems to want to throw a wrench in our plans. We're no closer to the center of the crowd when a loud squeal stops us in our tracks. It's an... Okapi? Wearing an artistic interpretation of what amounts to a precious little more than a thong and a leash. Ooh, what are you guys wearing? They've got a heavy accent, but I can't quite place the country. Uh... who? They're asking who designed your outfits. Oh, I did. 
darling, simply darling. You must make me a piece sometime, I insist. Can you give me a twirl? Rao awkwardly spins in place while the Okapi sips a glass of champagne. Exquisite Monami. I take it you'll be walking the catwalk later. Oh, we're just guests. Listen, we really gotta move on. Places to be. Oh, of course, darling. But just in case you do end up with some time on your hands tonight, I'll be in the VIP section in front. VIP section? Where else? It's where the brightest stars gather. The cream of the crop, if you will. They pass Rao a business card. With how little that they're wearing, I don't want to know where they pulled it out from and disappear into the crowd. A few similar interactions later and I'm starting to get frustrated despite the frequent compliments. This isn't getting us anywhere. There's too many people. And our target's stealthy enough as it is. Is Milo here yet? We could use some backup. I've been wondering that myself. He should have contacted us by now. He taps his earpiece. Raven 3, do you copy? Over. A few seconds pass before the line crackles and Milo's voice comes in. I copy loud and clear. Has the eagle landed yet? Over. I... Uh, I do not understand. Is Kazoo here yet? Ah, Kamu. Him, yeah. As a matter of fact, yes. I have served him drinks. You... You served him drinks? Getting close to target requires subtle touch not everyone possesses. And I am only one among three of us he does not recognize. How do you even get close to him? Matter was simple. Infiltrated VIP section as waiter. So he's what the... How did that gentle person put it? Cream of the crop? Did you manage to pick up any new information, Raven 3? Over? He is carrying large mysterious bag on his person. I was not able to discern if it had contained money talk gown. However, I did manage to play small tracking device on it. Tracking radius is small, but if it moves, we will know. Can you meet up with us so that we can formulate a strategy? Over. I am on my way. Excellent work, Raven 3. Over and out. Well, we know Camel is here and he's got a bag. That's a start. It should make retrieving the ground just a tad easier on us. Barely. He doesn't really tell us where to go from here, though. It tells us that he's carrying or planning to carry something important at the very least. And how many people have you seen carrying large bags? More than a few. Hmm. You don't think that he's already stolen what he came here for, do you? I highly doubt that. Ah! When did Milo sneak up on us? Whoa. Um... Ah, glad you found us. Are we just not going to mention Milo's outfit? That certainly doesn't leave a lot to the imagination. Eh, but I'm still imagining plenty of things. You look puzzled, Dusk Hound. Oh. Uh, just a little surprise is all. Surprised. Let's call it that. I am master of stealth in subterfuge. I can see that. Although, I am, how you say, out a duck in bunch? Most other staff is butterflies. What's the situation? Kamu is still on premise, moving about slowly. I do not believe he found what he is here for yet. He has been conversing with guests and designers, making small talk. No doubt trying to build rapport with people and trying to find out exactly who's carrying what. Precisely. The AP section is for people presenting at show, as well as distinguished guests. It is also near backstage area, where important costumes are kept under close watch by security. He's not likely to steal anything from that place directly. I agree, it would be too risky. So what would his plan be? 
There's too many people even for a master thief like him. I wouldn't be so sure. If he's trying to make friends here, I can think of a few ways that he might go about it. Think back to what Lou said. About him likely being after rare and expensive materials or outfits? Yes, what a better place to learn who has what than during the fashion show. He can observe his targets and plan to take what he needs accordingly. I overheard them talking earlier. I would not be surprised if he plans to follow targets into dressing rooms for ambush. So he's been buttering people up only to take their life's work? Man, what a nasty little sneak. We won't let it get to that. He will have to move very carefully to pull off his planned thievery. And the time a criminal is most vulnerable is when he's laser focused on his target. How'd he even get in there? I don't see him getting an invitation and the VIP tickets don't exactly come cheap. He most likely snuck in. No, he was in possession of ticket. Maybe it was forged? Not possible. Security checks thoroughly at the entrance. But then, how are we gonna get in? I doubt that we can fit in as a waiter like Milo did. I can think of something. We're not gonna smash a window again, are we? No. We pretend that we're there to participate. Models don't need tickets, right? Do you honestly think that'll work? If they keep such a close eye on tickets, they'll probably already vetted the models too. We only need to get close enough to Camo to give chase. I trust that you will think of something. I will go on ahead. Much as I try to argue against it, two minutes later we're standing at the gate to the VIP section. It's definitely a lot less crowded past this point, and I can see why. Nothing but fancy suits and champagne are allowed over here. A butterfly even more imposing than the waiter that, from before, thoroughly inspects everyone going in and out. We're going to have to be sneaky. Very sneaky. And who might you be, good sirs? Um, where... I throw Rao a look. We're scheduled to walk the runway a little while. How odd. You're certainly dressed the part, but I wasn't informed about someone of your... He looks Rao up and down. Caliber. Participating. You would be surprised. Hmm, yes. So it would seem... Listen, I'd love to stay in chat, but the boss will have our heads if we don't show up for hair and makeup. Alright, alright, fine. I just need your names, and I'll go and confirm whether you're allowed in. Okay, think fast. Just hope Ral catches on. Ugh, Raymond. He doesn't know who we are. What? Hmm, <gasps> yes, my dear Alexander. So it would seem. Never in my life have I been treated so rudely and unfairly. Why, I have a mind to up and leave right now. We were told that this would be a professional event. Where is the, um, the? The professionalism. Nowhere to be found, my dear Raymond. Ah. Uh, my dear sir, you are talking to the twin stars of Batavia. Have a bit of decorum. Descended from royalty. Psst. Aren't the royals hairs? Foreign royalty. We have graciously decided to take the stage and elevate this event. And you dare repay our kindness with such cruelty? Despicable. Your employer will rue the day, good sir. We were personally sent by Catherine Ambrosia Conic Charit de Devos. And believe you me, she has the resources to end your sorry career. I hope that Max's mom won't learn about me invoking her name like that. I'd have a major problem on my hands. Raymond, we're leaving. Fine, you may enter. Just don't let me catch you harassing any of the esteemed guests. Thank you, Verily, I say. I strut into the VIP area with all the bravado that I can muster, Rao following closely behind. We're very close to the catwalk now, no sign of Camel yet, though I do spot some folks who obviously have more money to spend than I do, to put it lightly. Those must be the big fashion designers and their entourages. Lou would be 
able to pick these guys out of the crowd, but they all look the same to me. I have to say, I don't feel right about lying. Mm. You were the one who said that we should pretend to be part of the show. I know. Doesn't mean that I can't feel bad about it afterwards. I doubt our charm and good looks alone would have gotten a sin. Though we certainly do get our fair share of compliments from some of the guests. Still, a hero should uphold the virtues of truth and justice. I agree with Dusk Hound. Yeah. My heart nearly jumps out of my chest as I turn around to face Milo. And how does he always catch me by surprise? I haven't witnessed this kind of stealth since my childhood days of slinking into the kitchen to pill for snacks at night. Why do you guys always sneak up on me? The crow doesn't even acknowledge my outburst. White lies are sometimes necessary to uphold cover, correct? If you put it that way. It's for a good cause, Don Hound. Milo, when's the show starting? He checks his wrists. When he remembers that he's not wearing a watch or any clothes at all, in fact, he sighs. I do not know exact time. Should be any minute now, though. I'm willing to bet that he'll try to use it as a distraction to enact his scheme. We should be at the ready. The last couple of words that leave his mouth are drowned out by the music blaring over the speakers next to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone outside the binary and in between. Are you ready? The crowd roars. Welcome one and all to the Bonds Through Bondage event where... Brow checks his tracker. I take a peek over his shoulder. He's very close. Unfortunately, the crowd's gotten a bit thicker, with all manner of folks including the Okapi from earlier gathering near the catwalk. Almost all of them are carrying large, weird bags. I don't know how I'm gonna find Kaboom. Come on, come on, showtime. I'm grabbed from behind. When I turn my head, I see that it's a butterfly from earlier, the one from the gate. Wait, but I... You're a model, right? Come on, the show's about to start. The paint and purple collection's up first. He pushes me up the edge of the catwalk through the crowd. The models have already started walking and I see the butterfly countdown before he gives me a prod and urges me to climb up. Left with no other option and no help from Raoul or Milo, I do. I feel my cheeks and body burn under all these spotlights. Hundreds if not thousands of eyes drilling into me. Just as many cameras pointing right at me. I look around the crowd in the VIP section. I spot Raoul and Milo immediately. Give him hell, Spot! Easy for you to say. You're not the one having to do this. I notice one person standing at the very edge of the VIP crowd. He blends in with the environment, and when he spots me, he seems to almost dive out of line of sight. I stop in my tracks. There's no doubt about it. It's Ka, Cha, Kablui. The model behind me, a tall, handsome rabbit, walks right into me. And a nearby Martin and Fish stop in their tracks as well. What are you doing, kid? Come on, keep walking. <gasps> That's him! I point at the chameleon. Milo and Raoul notice too. Clear the way! That man's a thief! So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. So... Ah, a lot happened. There's a lot more to come too, so buckle up. Anyway, so... The team basically found where Camo's going to be doing his next ice, thanks to, in part, uh, Alex's little personal reconnaissance with Ahab. Um, thankfully, Ahab was a little forthcoming with what he knew, you know, about the chameleon, more so because he was just upset about the fact that he got duped by this guy. So he decided to, you know, it's like, Fine, you screw me over, I'm gonna screw you over. Um, you know, professional courtesy. You know, you don't have that, so, you know, to hell with you. <laughs> anyway, so... Ah, they just... They are now having to go to a fashion show dealing with... K 
kinky stuff. Which, much to uh, Don Hound's uh, <laughs> his anxiety and things are just flaring up. Also, it was very interesting to see that a certain crow is he seems to be blending a little too well. So I'm wondering if that's hinting to his past. But yeah, oh, speaking of past, I'm also wondering a little bit more about um, Mr. Brevard's past, because he's he at first seems very extroverted, but I think that was more on a one on one basis. But now that like obviously he's in crowds, it's like, oh, God, I don't deal so well with crowds like, ooh, that's admittedly very um, relatable. I don't like crowds. I don't like dealing with a lot of people and making small talk. Uh, so yeah. Mm. Anyways, so I wonder how this whole little chase is gonna go for Alex and... Well, for Dusk and Dawnhound. I wonder how this whole thing's gonna go. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, anyway, so write down in the comments what you think and thank you all for watching slash listening. But first... The most important people here, the channel members. Ooh, look at them on the bottom now. They were going to be on the left, but I accidentally rendered it on the bottom. So now they're on the bottom. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, anyways, but yeah, so, you know, thank you all channel members for, you know, donating money, I guess you could say. Um, I mean, yeah, most of you get to see these videos before everyone else, but still, you know. You you don't have to do it, but you're doing it. So yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Ah, uh, but yeah, so yay, you guys make these videos possible. Anyway, so yeah, like if you would like to play Glory Hounds yourself, you can do so by going down into the link in the description, which should have the the Echo Project Twitter page. Um, which should have a direct link to the itch.io page where you can download the game and play yourself or you could just go to itch.io and download it there and I will also be posting down a link for their the Echo Project Twitter uh, blech, Patreon page where you can subscribe and get early access to pretty much every single Echo Project um, visual novel that they're doing and that usually includes like some behind the scenes and some other stuff um, it just depends who's updating like is it George is it a uh, red and saber or is it Howley so um so yeah anyways so yeah you know all the pertinent links are down there including my coffee and my paypal i guess in, in case you want to donate through that uh but yeah so i guess that's it for now and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye